which ones are good, which ones were bad. You curious about what's out there? I'm Joey Powers. I'm Don Treller. This is the best pictures. The ones you don't want to miss. Hit it. Say hello to my little friend. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Winners go home and prom queen. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I don't deserve this. Deserves got nothing to do with it. No sequel for you. Hi, and welcome to another edition of uh, Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. I'm Don Trevor. Welcome to the award-winning <laughs> Best Pictures. From, I'm covering up the year. This is actually from 2018. We won uh, the Most Trustworthy Film Critics Award. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. So if you're counting on us to tell you what, what, the, what movies are good. And what movies aren't, we're the guys. Have we like, there must be like some movie that we disagreed upon that we thought was like. Uh, well, The I Big didn't... Lebowski. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I love The Big Lebowski. That's going to be the number one movie that we've disagreed on. because, And I disagree with pretty much everyone because everyone loves that movie. It has yeah. a huge cult following. Just, I, I didn't care for any of the characters. Well, hey, like, that's just like <laughs> your opinion, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I feel like that's how everyone feels. It's like, that's your opinion, dude. Right. <laughs> you know? or, Come on, man. You know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, it, Scorsese, I mean, one of the best directors of all time. Yeah. I mean, he, well, you're, you're coming to like him. I was him, down. I was you're down coming on to him, like him more. But you were, you were definitely very down on him for a long time. I think I had some disappointments, some Martin Scorsese disappointments in the last 20 years. Right. And yeah, I mean, but his earlier work, I feel like, I mean, he was really great in the, in the seventies, the eighties, nineties. And then obviously he finally won best director in 2006 for uh, the departed, which was well earned, but well overdue because I mean, as we're going to talk about some of the films he's done, I mean, and he's changed it up. He's yeah. changed up a little mm -hmm. bit. He's done a couple of comedies. He's done some mm -hmm. period pieces, but mostly gangster. A lot I mean, of that's, gangsters. That's, that's pretty much what, what he's known for. Um, mean Streets is the earliest movie I've seen him do. I don't know if you've seen one earlier that you wanted to talk about. No, no. We were talking about a couple of them because he did, uh, he did a movie previous to that. We were talking about that. Roger Corman had him do uh, Boxcar Bertha. Right, which I haven't seen. Right. I haven't seen it. I don't, not that I know of that I've seen it, but... Uh, so yeah, that kind of got him on the board, and then he was able to uh, to do Mean Streets, which pretty much he took off after. Yeah, I like Mean Streets a lot. I mean, that's probably my favorite movie that he did in the seventies, and that's saying something because he's done several good movies in the seventies. Um, but that was really like a star-making role. I mean, I know he had already won supporting actor for The Godfather Part Two, but I think that kind of put De Niro in, a, in a, like on the highway to stardom. Yeah. Absolutely, because I mean, his performance is, I mean, it over, he's not even the star. Harry Keitel is the star of the movie, but De Niro's performance is just so, like, not, not even over the top, just like, he's just so aggressive and just like, he's someone you don't want to be friends with. It's like, you do because he's a likable guy, but at the same time, it's like, he's going to get you into bad situations, you know, and you just don't want to do it. Like, the scene at the, like, when they're playing pool or whatever at the bar. Right. And it's just like, I mean, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's just, it's, it, it, he, he nails it. Absolutely. I mean, and I mean, I think Harry Keitel, what, he falls in love with like De Niro's sister, I want to say. Is that right? I think it was his sister, I think right? it was, yeah. In the end, ultimately, is this, it, it's, it, it's not a feel good movie. Let's just put it that way. Right. But it's, it's pretty violent and it is without, I guess, being a gangster movie, kind of a gangster movie because he's just like, De Niro's character is just so troubled and just always in trouble with someone that you just... I don't know. What, what are your... It's a, I think it was. I think it was a good movie. I don't know about the best of the 70s. I think that's a, that's pretty big. Well, no, it is. It is. But, I mean, I just... I, I remember liking it more than Taxi Driver. And I like Taxi Driver. But I yeah. just... I remember liking Mean Streets more. And I haven't seen either one probably... I, I think I, I've seen Mean Streets definitely more recent than Taxi Driver. 
Yeah. Um, but that's that would be the next one on the list, I would think. And says, uh, have you seen Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore? No, though, I want to. I do, too. I list. haven't seen it either. And I was reading that Ellen Burstyn, who starred in the movie, that she asked for Scorsese. Really? I guess she had performed it, I don't know if it was a stage play or something, but she had performed it and she asked for Scorsese and then when she won the Academy Award. Oh, did she for that? I didn't know that. So that's pretty, that's pretty exciting. It's kind of funny that you mentioned her because I don't remember the last thing she was really in, but I was watching, it's, it's just strange, I was watching Inside the Actor's Studio last night and she was actually hosting it and interviewing Al Pacino. Wow. And it was just it, it was just like a complete blast from the past because they're talking about stuff that you don't even think of. Like the whole scene in um uh the beginning of Dog Day Afternoon when they go in and rob the bank. He's like Sydney Sydney Lumet, like literally he was literally directing you. Like, go over there. Now go back over here. Go back over there. Go back over there. Al Pacino's like, you know, after a while I really thought I was robbing a bank. <laughs> he's like, because he's just making you do these things going back and forth. He's literally directing you what to do, telling you what to do all the time. And I just I don't know, I, I just think that's interesting because I haven't I haven't heard the name Ellen Burstein in a long time. Yeah. You know? But uh all right, taxi driver. And taxi driver. Give me your take. Was, well, it was great. It was I don't think Hollywood was used to having uh dark movies like that at least the movie and it was through the lens of kind of a psychopath you know yeah he was gearing up i mean he gearing up to to you know to do this like killing you know to right do a, i was gonna say like an assassination yeah kind of yeah thing. kind of yeah and then which well, we see a lot of nowadays right back, well, back, back then it wasn't like common right i mean it probably didn't happen all the time you know maybe i don't know twice a year or something like that. So it was it was a little bit shocking to kind of see things through his yeah, point like of view, especially hit, like the mirror scene, you know, where right. he's looking himself in the mirror mm -hmm. and he uh, and he shaves his head into the mohawk. Yep. I mean, it was... I mean, there's definitely some icon iconic scenes in that movie. Um, ultimately, at the end, though, is he, like, the good guy? <laughs> That's I right. Mean, it's, it's, like, crazy because he's, like, so psychotic and, like, he, like, stalks Sybil Shepherd in a way. Like, he's, like, almost borderline obsessed with her. And then you got Jodie Foster playing, like, the, what, 13-year-old prostitute or whatever, you know? I mean, it's got some pretty big characters, or bit, pretty big names in right. it at the time that weren't, weren't very big. But it just, at the end, it's like, he really is ultimately the good guy. And it, and it seems like that tends to be kind of a theme with him. King of Comedy was similar. We had that same type of a thing where... The media becomes like obsessed with somebody, and then mm -hmm. you can become a celebrity right. for doing something, for being actually for being the bad guy, right? Which and has come to be, come to fruition. Here it was almost, uh, I was what's what's the word? Predicting of things, and now people, it, it got to a point now where people were getting book deals for creating for you know uh, causing mass murders. And then somebody would sign them to a book deal to write their story to make a movie about them. I mean, they're going to make a movie if they haven't already about Ted Bundy. Yeah, right. Wasn't I? I to think, no, they was. they did. There's one on streaming on Netflix called uh, I forget what it's called. It's with uh, Zac Efron and someone else. It's uh, I forget what it's called, but it, it is a movie about Ted Bundy. They made a movie of Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. I don't think this. I haven't seen anything about John Wayne Gacy, but I mean, it's kind of a kind of a phenomena that you can get fame. For right. being infamous. For be, yeah, for being a psycho, you know? And, but it is, I, I don't know. What, what did you like better between the two? Between that one and Mean Streets? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to say I like Taxi Driver. Taxi better. Driver. I think that's probably most people would say. But see, the thing is, I saw, I didn't see them in order either. So I kind of saw Taxi Driver way ahead of time. And then, oh, I did, I did too. Then Mean Streets. But, uh, but I still like Mean Streets better. Um, and you know, another 70s movie, because I was reading about, the, about, Scorsese this past week, right? And I think it was on the, I'm trying to say it was on the tail of uh, Taxi Driver because now he had kind of built up. He had done like Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, got big acclaim for that. I think he won the Palme d'Or for that. Um, then he got New York, New York. Again with De Niro, Liza Minnelli. Um, I haven't seen that. It was a box office bomb. And it caused him like great depression because here he was like building. Right, right. And got yeah, to establishing yourself as like a mainstream director. Right. And, and it was a movie he wanted to make. 
and you know that he had kind of really pushed forward and it was a bomb. Now you've asked me um, what I thought of it because I don't think I went to see it at the time. I think when it came out, I didn't quite go to, the, to see it at the theater. Um, but I saw it several years after. I mean, probably because it was a box office bomb. Right, that you didn't go, yeah. It didn't really catch on, so the theaters didn't hang on to it for a long time like they would have had it been a hit. So it kind of died out, and I probably got to see it, you know, on video when it came out. And um, I liked it. Now, I like Robert De Niro, and this was like that prime time for Robert right, De Niro, right? right? Where he had Godfather 2. right. Taxi Driver, Taxi Mean Streets, driver. and then you got New York, New York, uh, like you said. Raging uh, Bull. Raging Bull. 1980. And, uh, the one you just mentioned, King of Comedy. King of Comedy, yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah, he had like a like a 10 or 15 year run where he was probably... The best actor in the business. I mean, I think him, I think we've mentioned him, Pacino and Nicholson were probably, without a doubt, I mean, maybe you could throw Newman in there, but I mean, they were, without a doubt, the, like the stars of cinema. You know, maybe not necessarily the big box office draws, but certainly, like, the best actors. I, I guess Clint would probably get thrown in that conversation as well because of the Dirty Harry movies and all the westerns and everything. Right. Um, I think it's an underrated movie. I think it's I think it's a movie that we don't talk about normally as a, as a really good movie, but I've watched it and enjoyed it. Is and I would recommend it to you. I was going to say, is this something I would watch? Yeah, I think it is. You think I, you think I would I, watch I don't it? Think it's, I don't think it's... Uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. I don't think it's as sappy as you might be led to believe about it. And, and it's, it's so you don't think I'm a sappy movie kind of person? No, not necessarily. <laughs> no, I'm but not. I, I think uh, I don't think it's going to put you to sleep necessarily either. But it is it is like it's dramatic. It's not an action movie. I don't think anybody gets maybe I think somebody might get shot in the movie, but. You know, well, if someone gets shot, it's worth watching. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's kind of. I think it was a good movie. I think it's. I think it's compelling just because of Robert De Niro's performance. But I think sometimes it can be like not the best movie, but you can still enjoy it if you get a nice performance out of it. I mean, we're already, we're already out of the seventies as far as I'm concerned. So. Color of Money. Am I missing any? Am I are we are, missing are, any are, from are, the seventies? Something you've seen that, I, I mean, he didn't really do a ton that I've seen in this. Okay, so Mean Streets, Alice doesn't live, live here anymore. We which didn't I see. Seen, yep. Taxi Driver, New York, New York. What about The, the Last Waltz, which basically he directed seen. it, but it's basically it's a music, uh, it's about the band's last concert, and they have a bunch of guests and things. I don't know how I would like rate it as a director of right, a, right. a documentary yeah, yeah. like that, but um, Raging Bull, right, we talked about. Which is 1980, so now we're already out of the that, That's what I mean. We're already in the 80s, so let's just go right at so the color. So we can talk about Raging Bull. Right, we can talk about Raging Bull. What a performance. I mean, and, and, and this is, it's one of those things, I, I talk about it all the time. Saving Private Ryan didn't win Best Picture. Uh, Shakespeare in Love won. Right. This year, Raging Bull didn't win. Ordinary, Ordinary People. Have you seen Ordinary People? Oh, yeah, I saw it when it came out. How? I mean, ordinary people equals ordinary movie. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> Timothy Hutton won Best Supporting Actor for that. I'm still trying to figure that out. I mean, to me, was it Redford just hadn't won anything? Is that what it was? Because they gave him director and picture. Right. And he hadn't won anything prior to that. And it just, it, it, it makes me wonder because Raging Bull is 10 times better movie than ordinary people. It really is an ordinary movie. I just, it, what was so great about it? I mean, I like Donald Sutherland. Yeah. Um, I, Timothy Hutton. Mary Tyler Moore was coming out of a character or several characters that we had kind of come to know over the course of time, right? Where she was on black and white. She was uh, Dick Van Dyke's wife. Right. For several years. And then she had the Mary Tyler Moore show. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So we're used to this different type of Mary Tyler Moore. And then Moore. this is a very dra dramatic movie. I mean, yeah. absolutely 100% dramatic about a family breaking up, essentially. Um it's definitely worth seeing. I don't know if it was. I wouldn't watch it again. A better movie. I don't think it was a better movie at all. I thought Scorsese probably should have won director. I think uh, Raging Bull should have won picture. I almost argue that maybe Joe Pesci should have won supporting actor over Timothy Hutton. Yeah, I'd be so. I was. You know, I, I didn't think yeah. Timothy. I, I didn't think any of the acting performances in Ordinary People were like Oscar worthy at all. 
I would say Mary Tyler Moore, maybe. You thought so? Yeah. I, I don't know see, who won Best Actress Sissy that year. Sissy Spacek won for uh, Coal Miner's Daughter that year, All right. which I haven't seen. So I don't know. I always like Sissy but Spacek, but this might have been a, this could have been Mary Tyler Moore's year. You know? I I don't know. I just... I, I think it's maybe one of those things where I just, because it's a best picture and I hadn't seen it and it beat Raging Bull, maybe I'm thinking, okay, this movie's going to blow me away. And it didn't. I just, I don't yeah. know. And it's also because I like violent movies more than I like like movies like that. Well, and it makes you wonder how much people campaign for certain movies, too. Um, I mean, Raging Bull, Raging Bull stands the test of time, as, you know, as you notice, and Ordinary People doesn't necessarily hold the test no, of time. No, definitely not. Uh, I mean, I definitely would say that I know more people that have seen Raging Bull than Ordinary People. I think most people, I know a lot about this because this was the year I was born, and in high school we had to look up movies from the year we were born, so I know a lot I about I think it. 1980 also had, I could be mistaken, had The Stuntman, and Peter O'Toole got nominated for Best Actor for that. Well, no, nobody, I love that movie. Nobody's going to beat De Niro in Raging Bull, though. I mean, how much? what did he gain, like 40 pounds? I mean, he right. was huge, and his, his face, like everything about him, and he was just so like explosive. Like, very, like, angry and just, you know? And the fact that it's based on a true story, yeah. obviously that's always going to factor in whenever people are... But like I was saying before, I think Scorsese, after, after the, the bomb of New York, New York, uh, he got really depressed, and I think he got into drugs and uh, Raging Bull, kind of Robert De Niro, who I guess is his buddy, you know, because they've done these movies. They've done so many movies together, yeah. Kind of pulled him, pulled him out, and I think I think Robert De Niro might also have a writing credit really? for Raging, Raging Bull. Bull. <clears throat> um, I think he kind of pulled him out and said, "Come on, let's do do your magic here. Let's, you know, because he knew what a what a talent uh, Scorsese, Scorsese was. Right? Yeah. So and um, is. I mean, he still is. I mean, he's still doing it today. Oh I mean, yeah. We're obviously going to talk about the Irishman, but, but uh, whatever happened, like we're talking about Raging Bull. Like he had a De Niro had a great performance. Pesci made a name for himself because mm -hmm. I didn't know Joe Pesci from Adam before that movie, but you can't forget him after it. No, because he hit it. It, it was a great performance. No. Well, what about Kathy Moriarty? I know. I was just trying to think of her name. You hardly ever see her after that. I yeah. mean, that was kind of like, and I think that's the way it is with a lot of actresses. You know, they 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 get a part because of their looks, um, not necessarily that they don't have the talent. Kathy Moriarty. I think what holds her back is she had a very strong New York accent. And I don't think, if you've ever seen her in any other movies, she doesn't really get rid of it. No. So she can't play somebody from the South. Right, right. She couldn't she, play somebody yeah, from England. It, it, you know? She's stuck to this one like kind of character or kind of... Right. Yeah, no, so that, that probably limited her a little bit. But uh, well, she does a nice job yeah. in Raging Bull. Absolutely. Holds her own with what I would consider those two heavyweights. Big time, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mentioned it about uh, Mira Sorvino, you know, when she won for Mighty Aphrodite. It's like, I couldn't name three films. I think The Replacement Killers and Summer of Sam. Right. Or, I don't know what she's been in since then. But that might have to do with Weinstein, too. Like, right. I, heard, I right. heard that she had some kind of a run-in with Weinstein since then. And right, like, but still, I mean, we're talking, I think she won in 95. That's 24 years ago. Yeah. You know, and she won an, it was like Cuba Gunn Jr., you know, he won for uh, Jerry Maguire. What was he in? Boat trip? <laughs> Boat always, trip? Seriously? I always, I always bring up uh, Men of Honor. A uh, Men of Honor? Yeah, I mean, he was in Men of Honor. That was another De Niro movie too. With De Niro? Yeah, and Charlize Theron. That was a good movie. Good cast. I liked both. Um, I, that's that's a movie I liked a lot. It always gets me. No, that is a good movie. I forgot he gets was in me that. Going, yeah. I mean, he had a small role in Pearl Harbor, but I mean, and doesn't he have? That wasn't he uh, on a TV show now? About a record company, or am I thinking of somebody else? I think that's um, Terrence Howard, isn't it? Oh, all right. Empire? That could be, yeah. yeah. Again, confusing um, the two guys. But I like, you know, I like, because I like them both. I like Cuba Gooden Jr. Uh, I think he played uh, OJ in the uh, TV series. I the, think he's the, a competent actor. Series. I think they could pull him out to do something. Who knows? Maybe he's a pain in the neck to work with. I don't know. It, it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder, because Mira Sorvino, I always thought, was a pretty good actress. And she's an attractive girl, you know? Right. Um, Goodfellas. Can't, can't talk about Scorsese without mentioning Goodfellas. I mean, he's... It's, it's one of your favorite movies. He's, top five. He's, Pulp Fiction, Goodfellas. I, 
Yeah, platoon. I, I have like we've talked about this. I have like thirty top five movies. So I don't know. Yeah, it's in my top five, but I don't know if it's really my top five. But I love that movie. Now, what what year does it have for that? I think it's eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. Goodfellas. Yeah. God, that almost it almost feels like I can't that can't be right because I saw it when I was in New York City and I remember being kind of annoyed because people in the theater were making noise. I want to say it lost to uh, Dances with Wolves, Best Picture. Yeah. I want to say that was the year. I'm not positive. Um, you feel like that's a Best Picture? Goodfellas over Dances with Wolves, big time. Dances with Wolves wasn't a bad movie, but it's just long, you know. And it's like Goodfellas just. It, it, Goodfellas also is a long movie, but it doesn't feel long. It's like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right. You know, it just it moves, it moves so fast. You know, where it dances with the wolves, there's like 45 minutes where no one talks. You know, it's like... Yeah, you know, I mean, Goodfellas, Goodfellas is a movie we remember and we talk about a lot. And Joe Pesci, again, Joe mm -hmm. Pesci has the scene, you know, where mm -hmm. we all talk about it. I Oscar. quote it all the time. One is Oscar. You know? As he should, you know? I mean, that was... That's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, Dancing with Wolves, which I hadn't seen. I, I think you lent it I to me. I did lend it to you. And I, it's a good movie. I'm, nothing against Dancing with Wolves. It was fine. You know, it wasn't, but... Best picture, it best director. It wasn't great. I mean, and I like, see, I like... Now I'm looking it up. I, I, I don't know if I have the right year or not now. But no, go ahead. Keep talking. I was going to say, I like this movie better now that I've seen it. I didn't like it as much the first time I saw it because people were making noise in the theater and... I wasn't making the connection. I thought it was a little violent. Uh, oh, it's uh, definitely violent. <laughs> I don't think it's a little violent. But it's... now I've seen it since. I actually, I own it. I own it somewhere. And I've seen Goodfellas a few more times. I like it. I've seen Goodfellas many times. It, yeah, I would say it probably is in my top five. I mean, Pulp Fiction, Goodfellas. I don't know. It's hard. It's not mine. But then... You know, when we get into this, and of course, I was I was blaming I was blaming Scorsese for this, but this could be actually be the writers, is that I was comparing Wolf of Wall Street, that does that same kind of voiceover where the guy's telling the story. So like DiCaprio, it almost was kind of a little bit of a repeat of the same. I mean, it's, the story is different, but it's that same element where DiCaprio or Ray Liotta, they're doing the voiceover, they're telling the story. This is how mm -hmm. I started out, and then I got into this. Right. How you went from, from point A to point B. Right. The whole movie thing. And I just felt like it was kind of a, I can't think what the word is, but I was going to say like a, like a tool, the way they did, the way they did that. They moved right. the script. Yes. No. I blamed it on Scorsese, but it actually could have been the writers. And both movies are good movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say, I, I was right, it was Dances with Wolves. Um, Costner beat out uh, Martin Scorsese. Um, Jeremy Irons' Reversal of Fortune won Best Actor. De Niro was nominated for Best Actor, but not for Goodfellas, for Awakenings. Oh. Which I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Yeah, really, Robin him Williams. Him and Robin Williams, yeah. Um, Again, Robin Williams doing a straight part, which, you know, I rave about. Robin Williams in the straight parts. Great performance that year. Kathy Bates in Misery. The part, the, the, the scene where she puts <laughs> like the, the board in between his ankles. Oh my God. That's a good movie though. Um, uh, I'm glad she won an Oscar because I, I still like her to this day. Ghost won Best Original Screenplay. Dances with Wolves won Adapted Screenplay. So I know we're off topic. But you wanted to mention something real quick. Or I don't know if you wanted to or not. But you had mentioned to me about Shutter Island. You didn't like the end. Did you like it before until the end? You know, I, I thought, and I'm watching the movie, and I thought to myself, oh, don't tell me this is going to be a shaggy dog joke. So I couldn't believe that they would do it. So I kept, in my mind, I'm watching this whole movie, I'm like, okay, maybe it's this, and maybe this is going to happen, maybe the other thing. When the end came, I was so disappointed that they pulled my leg. It's almost like, I don't know, you know, like the Joker, you could almost be disappointed with, with the, movie, the new movie Joker because of the same type of thing. You're like, oh, my God, did that whole... Well, right. I don't want to ruin it. Right, no, exactly. Like and I remember reading the review because I went and saw that in the theater when it came out. And that's what they said. They're like three quarters through the movie, you lose it. It's like it, they just lose you and then you're like, this is really how it's going to end. Like all the way through this, you have this, and then that's how it ends. And sure. that's the review I read. And I went into it with like high expectations and it was disappointing. You're I think right. I read at the time it was the top grossing Scorsese movie. I wouldn't be surprised. 
Like it was that popular at the theaters, which I didn't realize. No, it was. It was a big, I mean, DiCaprio, Mark Ruffalo, I mean, that's a pretty good one-two combination right there. I think Mark yeah. Ruffalo is one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. Um, but we are running out of time. Uh, so maybe we should talk about some of the stuff that's coming out at the movies. The I couldn't Irishman. believe it. I was incredulous. The Irishman. Because the reason we're talking about this is The Irishman. Because yeah. I thought it was coming out at the theaters this weekend, and it didn't. No, it's streaming on Netflix on the 27th, but it's basically just limited release. I don't think it's going to be anywhere anywhere near us anytime soon. That stinks. So, yeah. And then uh, Motherless Brooklyn opened this past weekend. 1,300 locations. They were, like, disappointed. Like, really? A movie that big, you're only going to open it in 1,300 spots when you yeah. have movies that, like, Joker's still playing in, like, 4,400 places. You know, so, but we are out of time, so. We'll be back next week. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. I'm Don Trevler. These are the ones you, you don't, don't want to miss. miss. I'm the king of the world. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Here's Johnny. Go ahead. Make my day. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it.